Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mason Kaur, host of the Stampede Network podcast. Welcome. Today, I got my boy, Jimmy Farley. He's the man. He's the legend when it comes to creation, short form content. This man is probably behind the scenes of most of the videos that you've seen that have gone viral. So I've known this dude for a few Four years. Brands. Brands. Four brands. Yeah, hey, you, you the man for the creator influencer shit. <laughs> but this is the man with the sauce. So he's, he's someone who's scaled a brand to seven figures organically in a single year, exited that, so got one of those under his belt, took some time to figure himself out a little bit, and now he's helping the next generation become the people who are going to lead brands, marketing, and all that stuff into the future and really change the game. So, Jimmy, thank you for being here, bro. Excited to dive into the sauce a little bit. Yes, sir. Excited to be here. Dude, I love these kind of podcasts because I, like, I, I, I refuse to come to a podcast or calls like prepared. I just want to come and just spitball it, you know? That's I'm with you. It. It's better when you free flow. It's not scripted. We don't want to make it robotic. Um, yeah, like, you know, when you got those calls, like, we've definitely had some of these calls, Mason, where it's like, damn, I wish we recorded that. You know, Dude, where you that's just, what I'm saying. you know, that that's what a podcast is to me. Exactly. So what I want to do is kind of start with, um, you know, how you got into commerce space. So just kind of like, tell me first, like, when did you, when did you get the epiphany of I'm going to run it up on TikTok and like, what were, what were your methods on how you got into that, how you discovered it, where the desire came from, all that. Dude, it was funny. It was totally by accident, honestly. Um, Back in 2020, when I first got into like online stuff, I had gotten sent home for for COVID from college. You know, we were just chilling, and that just happened to be the best time ever to get in. And we were fucking around with Facebook ads, all this kind of shit, just total beginners. Me and my me and my best friend from my hometown, and we were trying to make our Facebook ads perform better. Like this goes to show you how beginner we were. Yeah, we're like, oh, we need to go make a, we need to go make an Instagram and a TikTok and like let's just start posting there just so we look like when people search us up it looks more official and I went and posted a couple of TikToks this is back when we were doing the color changing trunks and shit and I post a couple and I come back later I'm at my boy's house and he's like yo what was up with that one post it got like a hundred thousand views and I was like shut the fuck up bro like holy fuck you know, this is interesting because I had gone viral when I was in high school, like a senior in high school, mm-hmm. playing a prank on my teacher and shit. Um, <laughs> Wait, tell me, so tell I, me about that. I want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, I was, I was, I, I fucked around. I was a huge class clown in, in high school. Yeah. And um, my math teacher was this, shout out Miss Gleason. She was like a, just a character, bro. Like literally like, you know, the magic school bus. Yeah. Miss Frizz? yeah. Like look just like her, bro. And I just, I, I made this whole math equation on the board. And when you erase the top of it, it said like, I love you. <laughs> it was just some stupid shit, some stupid shit. Right. And her, she just is so like, ah! and then it went, it had like 2.4 million views in 2019. What? Like, yeah, that shit was crazy. Yeah. Um, so I knew what it looked like though. Right. I understood like, okay, this whole ramping up shit, whatever, you know, where you, you see it, it gets a hundred thousand, 900,000. A million, you know, it just keeps on going. So I was like, holy fuck. And so that video that got 100,000 views for the swimwear, you know, goes to like 1.2 million. Doesn't really convert because our website looks like a fucking fifth grader make it, made it. But I was like, it, it got more sales than we had seen before. You know, we had never seen a $500 day or some shit, you know. Right. And I'd never even seen a brand on TikTok before. Like that wasn't a thing back then. No one did that shit. So we were just fucking around, posting these videos. Like, we definitely had a natural inclination to understanding how to make content. Like, I remember the follow-up video we did, like, we knew exactly what the fuck to do. Had, like, another 1.4 million. And we just kind of ran with it from there, bro. It was history. Like, we we, we had we were just selling the trunks. When we sold, started selling the bikinis, like, that was a fucking game changer. I was on the way to college. And we posted this video like, hey, we just dropped the bikinis, not knowing what the fuck we're doing. Yeah. The website still looked dude. I remember our website had a sixteen second load time. Bro, what? And 
A 16 second load time, and we did a $35,000 day on it. That's absurd, and dude. I can't I imagine swear to God, bro. Like four. Oh my God. Yeah, I swear to God. And I was on the way to college that day, went to go. I was finishing like fraternity pledging and all this bullshit. And I literally was like, all right, I'm going home. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go a gap year. I'm going to see what I can do with this shit. And, you know, the rest was history. So what do you think contributed to the swimmer brand taking off? Like, what are some of the elements of that? Super viral product, bro. Still to this day, that's like, I think a really important thing on TikTok is just like, you know, just serious wow factor. There's a lot of questions that come around it. How does it work? You literally just pour water on it. You know, it changes color. Mm -hmm. And I that just always worked, bro. And we were really early. We really understood shit early on of like, you know, repeating your winning, your styles and all that. But dude, I made a lot, a lot of mistakes with that brand. You know, like we didn't, by the end, we pretty much sold for like pennies because revenue was down so much. Like we had a huge peak where we absolutely like crushed it. I made like solid money on it, but not not anything close to we should have. Like it should have been more of a thing of like closing it towards the peak mm -hmm. because the product doesn't really add much value to anyone's life, right? It's like a, it's a product you can get to seven figures. You're not getting to eight with that thing. So with that, if you're looking back, trying to give yourself some advice, you know, say you're just kind of starting out the journey, trying to go viral, trying to make a brand that, you know, sells and converts. What are some of those like main principles and lessons that you would tell yourself again after selling? Dude, I mean, selling products that are just like people genuinely need and it doesn't even have to be a problem solute, like solving pro product, right? It's like, it can be, it can be anything that's just a serious value add. And it's also just like really high quality. Like the dude, it was so hard to get the sizing right for women and just all these, there was a lot of issues with the product the product we were selling was not the best. We, could. we were trying to make it, but we just didn't have the skills, right? Like it wasn't, you know, we had like a lot of returns and exchanges and all this shit. So it's like, dude, just not not selling the best quality things like i really try to focus on selling things that i'm like this is like when people buy it i want them to become my fucking affiliate now right you know i want them to love this fucking product right and so at the end of the day it's about impact you know and that's really yeah. what you're chasing the most i can tell community and like shit like that i mean community we're not really chasing with our brands that's more of like my my personal stuff mm -hmm. um but that's definitely something I want to focus on later, right? Like you did a lot of community shit and I think that builds like a really strong base. Yeah. You know, dude, for sure. It's like when, when you always lead with value and your intent is to actually help people. Mm -hmm. That's why I say all the time is like, people are like, choose your niche, choose this and that. It's like, no, just like give value the way that you know how to provide that value. And people are going to be loyal to you at the end of the day. Like people are buying from people. Right. Right. It's interesting though, Mason, because with like me and Rob shit, like they're not though. Interesting. You know, I I don't know what's going. That's like someone. They they're just buying. Like we're just going viral. <laughs> Dude, see, like since enrolling the creators too, it's the same type of deal. Um, but it's like what it. How's the um? How's like the loyalty of the customers once they get it? I mean, I know Amazon's disgusting with that one. Yeah, I, I think Amazon just plays a big part there. Like we have a lot of subscriptions now. Um, I mean, Rob formulates pretty like, you know, really solid products. Right, right. But it's not like, dude, it's not that whole thing of like, you know, it's not like, like Bloom was early on, you know, or, or how your brand is where customers are like, you know, oh my God, like, they don't have, we don't have a Facebook group of moms talking about the fucking product, you know, right. and it, you know, or like anything like that. I think too, like you guys hit a, um, you know, blue ocean where, or whatever the term is, where it's like, you know, guys today are just, they want to get their testosterone under control. And it's just such a, yeah. it's such an issue. Like it's a massive issue that I say it's not talked about enough, but it's talked about a lot now. Right. And so at least we're getting some awareness on it, but it's like, you know, part of that too is, is you entered, and I, this is where I struggled at the beginning was I was trying to sell to a market that wasn't even there. Right. 
That's that's uh, that's exactly what I was thinking. Cause we kind of let the other people do the warming up. You know, Huberman talks about those kind of ingredients. Joe Rogan talks about these types of ingredients. You know, they've already warmed it up. We just want to be the people they're buying from. Mm-hmm. How much of this you did know? you learn in college? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, bro, dude. Dude, college. There's no chance I would have learned anything. Now, I so like I would have graduated this year from college. Yeah, and. So all of my like a good amount of my friends are graduating and shit, and they're getting jobs. Like a good amount of them going into marketing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I I honestly think those people who are really arrogant about college are kind of dorks. Um, <laughs> I'm with you, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's like, bro, it's it's not that big of a deal. Like I don't around my hometown friends. Like I don't even really know what they think I do. Um, but I look at it though. I'm gonna be honest with you. I do look at it, and I'm like, okay, these marketing jobs they're getting. If I were to go into this this like pool of hiring or whatever, I would fucking dominate them. Yes. Like I'm like, dude, you go you put me in this marketing pool, like bro, I'm like I'm running with the fucking damn near CMO type shit. And I don't even dude, CMO, like at most of these big companies, like, dude, they're not even they're the ones hiring us for consulting calls on TikTok. <laughs> right. You know, it's like Right. It's it's just very interesting shit, right? Like you can't learn social media marketing in college. I I don't think there's a single college class that's teaching that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like if you look at college, they're normally like five to ten years outdated. Honestly, I'm mean, yeah. I mean, dude, I don't even. Are they teaching uh, social media in college? So I went because when I was in school, I I was in marketing, and so the stuff I was learning was just like. You know, SWOT analysis and like, oh my fuck, bro, bro fuck, I, it's so stupid, and it's all that shit that like, there's no action behind it, right? Because like, at the end of the day, yeah. they just want to turn us into people who can work for somebody. Right, right, right. Or honestly, bro, it's like we already, you're kind of trained to already be wanting to work for someone, so they're just, you know, it, yeah, it's crazy to me. And it, another thing, I think like. There is some benefits. Like, I feel like accounting, mm-hmm. accounting's good. Like, that, those, some of those classes I took were like pretty decent, like credits and debits, good to learn from. Um, and some schools I feel like teach pretty good consumer psychology. Like, that stood the test of time, mm-hmm. teaching scarcity, teaching, you know, all that kind of stuff. That stuff's gonna work. But, bro, it's, it's like you said, it's pointless if you don't put it into action, bro. Right. Yeah. I mean, 99% of people just sit on the, they just sit on it and they'll be like, Oh, I have an MBA. I'm like, congrats. You're yeah, broke. broke. <laughs> what? Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, what do you do with that? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, education system is definitely changing. That's a good topic. So where do you see, cause you're really paving like without even, I mean, you realize it, but you're creating this new education type model right now with creator corner. Right. So, Mm -hmm. so where do you really see it going and how do you see that like kind of fit into this new creator economy? And like, how would you define that for someone who's just getting into this space? Yeah, dude, it's different. It's different, right? Like this, it's a new, it's a new era of like, let's just call them faceless creators. Mm -hmm. Right. Even though like their faces might be in it, it's like your personality is taken away though. It's not about, you know, Mason Kerr anymore for these people. It's like, you know, blowing up this brand, being a, you know, just like a creator for them and understanding how to do that. I'm explaining that badly, but basically like what brought me to creator's corner, which we'll get to, cause no one knows what I'm talking about. Right. Um, was I was doing this whole like TikTok agency shit, right? Like obvious, you know, I'm like, all right, here we go. Client work, bang, work with some dope brands. I mean, I don't regret any of it. Like I've met some really dope people like Rob, I met from doing that. Um, he started as a client, you know, like you connected me with him. Yeah. Best shit that ever happened. That, dude, Best shit that ever happened. The to me. way that happened was the funniest shit ever. Yeah, dude, that was literally like that. Literally changed. Rob changed my life, bro. Like he's, yeah. he's like, I, I can't explain to you how appreciative I am for him and you connected me to him. Like it's, it's unreal. The synergy we have. Um, but like, regardless, that's where I started. I was just doing this client work. Sucked ass bro like i'm not saying like the people part i'm just talking about like you know hiring all these creators where we basically like run this method of you know four creators five creators for a brand let's say let's say we take you know spartan on 
you guys come on. We make uh, what's the what's the fucking? I always call your shit Spartan. It's a Stampede Network. The Stampede, bro. I always mess the that, that ass up and shit. <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm sorry. You chill. Um, you chill. Fucking. Let's say we take Stampede on, right? Like it's exactly what we're already doing. I'd get like four creators. I'd get Max. I'd get Boom. I'd get Bang, right? And I'd put them on. They all make content on their own accounts. Stampede Network, Stampede Network USA, subsidiary accounts. But what happened, bro? Is like I'd be charging. You know, it's not cheap when you got to pay four creators. You're doing 120 month, 120 videos a month, right? right? So it's like, all right, I have to pay these creators four thousand. So I'm gonna charge the brand, you know, six thousand. I'm making two thousand a month, but like, bro, that shit ain't waking me up in the morning, bro. Right. Like, it's just not. It's just not. And I can only take like five clients on. So I'm doing all this fucking work, making ten thousand. I'm like, bro, this is ass. Like, fuck this. I already had money. I was like, dude, this is just stupid. Mm -hmm. But what I realized, bro, is I was like. Okay, there, there's still like, everyone needs it though. It was the easiest package to sell. Everyone was hitting me up like, bro, sure. I need this, like, like whatever. There, but there was issues with that model. So I'm like thinking, how the fuck can I do this? And I was also running out of creators. I had like four good, like six, seven good people. Yeah. But then they would get filled up. Like, bro, you can't really do more than four clients per creator. And so I was like, fuck. These creators are all hella happy with me though, because they're making you know five thousand a month, and they used to work at Chipotle. And I was like, okay, dude, I'm gonna just flip it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna charge these creators to edge. I'm gonna educate them. I'm gonna make this fucking group. I'm gonna have them work directly with the brands, because then the brands can pay less, the creators can get paid more, and own that relationship mm -hmm. with the brands. The retention will be higher. You know, everything was gonna work. The communication will be better. The creators are going to be able to make way more money because, like, dude, this is – that was, like, uh, where I, Sydney, you know her? Yes. Sydney. She was the one who really opened my eyes, bro. I was like, dude, because she was really working at Chipotle, making 2000 a month. Once she started working with me and, like, I was putting her on brands and stuff, dude, she had some months where she was making fifteen, twenty thousand, 20000 bro, off commissions and all this shit. And I was like, dude, she, like, bossed the fuck up from being a creator. She didn't do all this drop shipping bullshit. She went straight to making the money. You know, like, and she got so dirty at TikTok so quickly because she was selling good products like the Stampede Network or fucking, you know, Rob's brand, just making like really good products. You're never going to find that with some drop shipping bullshit, like, mm -hmm. you know, selling, selling some, some flippy toy or whatever the hell they're doing. You know, so many people waste their time and, and think that they can't blow shit up because they're selling drop shipping products, right? Facts. So. It was like I remember thinking, oh, damn, like I don't know if people will catch on to this model. Like we, I really was like thinking about it for three, four months. Like, damn, you know, like I don't know if because there's a sentiment around like, oh, well, I gotta work for someone else being a creator, bullshit idea, but whatever. Um, and so I was like, fuck, I don't think I can really like convince that many people. Totally wrong, bro. The people saw the vision, and the shit fucking works. So with Creators Corner, we charge these creators, you know entry for the program train them like crazy you know we have six hours of content two or three coaching calls a week you've seen this shit you're a coach yeah you know all the kids are hungry as fuck they're serious and then we just connect them with these amazing brands they run up content and dude fucking everybody's winning bro like you make money the first month everybody's guaranteed ten thousand back like and we smash it bro kids are doing this in six weeks it's, you know dude making, it's making. absurd um you know keep them under the radar but you know, one of one of yeah. our creators is uh, he just generated almost like twenty grand in three days, bro. And it's like, it's just a, it's it's all symbiotic. This is what I like. I love so much. And like, dude, I'm just getting started with this shit. You know, like we're six weeks in, and I'm like, I, I this is like probably my biggest win in my career because of how how symbiotic it is on the front end from the creators, bro. Made made really solid money. I'm not gonna get into the exact figures, whatever, but like made a lot of money in july mm -hmm. and i was like okay like take home money that info money hits different you know i'm like all right boom make the money on the front end the creators are making money everyone's doing well so then it sells itself more right and more people are joining but then i take this and we have control over which brands we take so we take only amazing brands mm -hmm. some of the brands will pay us too for these creators you know so i'm almost making the same agency money by having these brands come on we we're very selective too we turn away most people you know, so we're only working with good people and I don't have to deal with the client relations. The creators are doing that. Right. Right. I don't have to do any of that shit. And our own brands like me and Rob, 
bro, we fucking 2x how many creators we had, and we like 3x the quality of content going out, bro. You know, like we we, dude, I think I think we like damn near doubled revenue this month. Like, bro, you guys, it's just been, like he's been posting <laughs> screenshots. I'm like, it's disgusting. I mean, now I get it though. It's like our our weekly revenue has like doubled in a week, bro. And it's like, and now you're like, okay, now it's a game of give me five more. Yeah. And how do you get five more before I could never get five more? Right. Not good ones. Right. Right. And I would have to take all this time. Like I had to, to invest my time without getting any money paid for it into training them. Now I get paid to invest that time in them. And then they invest back in me by just making all this content and shit. It's like, right. bro, it, it gets stupid. So for the business, so, for the brand owners out there, here's something I want to ask you real quick. Because when I was asking you, you know, how do you systemize this? You even brought up, you know, you want them all together. A lot of brand owners tweak out about, you know, and I have too, thinking that, oh, they're just going to like do a mutiny on you. You know, if you like get all the crazy, have you noticed there's a difference in like their creation if you bring them together? What do you mean by mutiny? What's that? I don't even know that word. Like a lot of business owners want to keep relationships like separate. You know, mm. keep so many things private, but it's like, there's also this strength in collaboration with the mm -hmm. creators. And so it's like, have you noticed yeah. that? Yeah, a hundred percent, bro. And especially, honestly, I just, I'm so grateful for the people in my program too. Like they're just really fucking, they're just dope ass kids, bro. Yeah. Like they, they all, they're all, it's like a summer camp in our group, bro. Like they all know each other. So when they go to the different brands they're on the same brands, they're like, oh shit, what up, bro? Yeah. What up? You know, like, you know, so they all know each other and talk. I think it would be different if it was a bunch of random ass people, right. you know, I'd still probably do it, but these kids all know each other and shit. So it makes more sense. For sure. And then it's like, you can share the winning videos with each other and it's like, it only exactly, exactly. You, you build the flywheel, dude. Like I don't even check like our, our, our discord that much. I just let them chat with each other. I do a call every two weeks. Um, I'll come in if there's like announcements or whatever, mm -hmm. but the creators are chatting about what worked. Hey, I just cracked this. Oh damn, this video is solid. You know, it's just amazing. They can go and do their own thing yeah. and it, they really do influence each other. For sure. Like, for sure. And that's what I've noticed too, is your communities and the collective too. Um, and for those listening, the collective is one of Jimmy's other communities. They're so engaged. So like, what, mm -hmm. what is, that's a, that's a big struggle for a lot of people. It's like, how do you get that engagement within your community? So that just turns in this ecosystem of, of value and wealth and creation. Dude, you already, yeah, you already know this. Shit. It, it, it's, I mean, I, I personally try to not even like get into the whole, like, you know, engagement hacks and blah, 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 blah. Like someone asked me that the other day and I was like, bro, I don't fucking know. Like just. <laughs> What I, what I, what I do know is you just need to be authentic. Like I, I'll get on calls. I'll swear. Like I'll be, I'll, I'll roast kids. Like, I'll, <laughs> like, you know, we just be, we fuck around a lot, right? you know, and, and provide it. Like I want to, I want to, whatever they pay to enter, you know, I mean the collective's cheap as shit. Collect is 50 bucks. Um, whatever they pay to enter, I want them to get 10 X more. Like I want to just like throw in their face fucking value. Yeah. You know, like we have a whole ass course. We have like 25 hours of recordings, you know, like just, I want to like, want them to be like, oh, there's no chance I wouldn't write a five-star review. Right. I would not write a five-star review. A hundred percent. And that's why I've noticed with you, dude, is like, and I was telling Rob about this too, is like, you're one of the dudes who I'd actually like trust in a life or death situation. Cause like you're real and authentic all the time. And so that's what a lot of. You know, that's where the engagement comes from. That's how you build a community. So many people want to come in and, you know, have personas and act like someone, act mm -hmm. like an authority. It's like, you know, at the end of the day, we're all just, we're just all people, right? Creating. Uh -huh. And so. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate that, Mason. Fucking the only, dude, it's funny. It's like, I wish I could even persuade it more. It's really easy to do within the discord. Like you get on like a call. Like we'll do late night calls where we're really just fucking around too. And it's, it's easy, you know, mm -hmm. on sometimes on Twitter and IG, it, it's my IG is getting better now, but for the longest time, it was like hard for me to convey who I really am sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, like I, but money helps with that too, bro. Like money does help where you just, you have more time to think and realize it doesn't really matter. 
you know, like you're as long as you're good, like it doesn't really matter what people think and stuff like that. Like, I, I want to keep getting better at it because it really it just brings the best self confidence out of yourself, and it brings the best people into your life. Like, authenticity is the is the realest way. Mm -hmm. And that's where like money is an amplifier. So it's like if someone's an asshole, it's only gonna make them more of an asshole. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's like you know if you look at yourself. Cause it wasn't long ago where you like kind of going through some, like a struggle period. How long ago? Was that? Yeah. I mean, three years ago I had zero, zero dollars. Yeah. So like, what were some of, what was like the difference in mindset back then? Um, you know, versus now, what were some of the thoughts you're thinking? A lot of people probably relate to this. Dude, I always wanted money my whole life, bro. Like, fuck my whole life. I didn't really grow up with much, like really really always wanted money but the biggest thing that that took me from and i was a hustler though like i was always selling shit and doing stuff like that like most people aren't in my hometown are not surprised i'm doing shit like this mm -hmm. but i never took anything big and that was a hundred percent because of myself you know there's no other factor there's nothing holding me back except for myself and i think the the biggest mindset switch i had and that will continue to to take me to higher and higher levels is the only way I fail is if I give up. Mm -hmm. You know, like as long as I show up every day and I'm at my computer for 10 minutes a day, whatever, for 30 years, like whatever, I'll make it. I'll continue to make it, you know, like shit. I don't think you could take everything away. Like you'd probably have to kill me to make me stop doing this shit. I love it. But it's like you, you know? didn't always have that mindset, right? No, exactly. One, you know, dude, there was this kid I went to college with. So this is like some benefit of college, not, not in the classroom. There was this kid I went to college with though. I, so I used to have a dorm room bar. Like I would like, if you went back to my old college, bro, that's all people remember me for is I was, dude, I was making 200 bucks a night selling drinks out of my room. Bro, what? I had my whole shit. <laughs> I swear to God, bro. I swear to God, I can show you pictures of this shit. That is legendary. And that's how I paid for like my shit in college, like, and, and partied and shit. It was lit. Um, that was probably like the most fun I ever had in the business type thing. Um, and this kid in my fraternity who was a little bit older was doing some FBA shit, bro. And he was, he, uh, like he was kind of like a guru type shit. Like he, he would rent Lambos and shit. And so I was like, yo, what the fuck are you doing, bro? I'm like, yo, yo, what are you doing? Cause he like, you know what time I'm on. You see what I'm doing. Like, I want to be like you one day. Like, I don't fuck with any of that shit. I want to be like. Kid ended up kind of being like a, like doing some fuck shit apparently, but you know, I don't know, selling some bullshit, whatever. Yeah. Regardless, I liked that dude. He was cool, but he told me, I remember I, I was, when I was a pledge, I had to drive him home, you know, when he was drunk and he told me, he's like, yeah, bro. First month, I, I didn't make no money. Second month, I lost a lot of money. Third month, didn't make any money, but I just did not give up and I refused to give up. And the fourth month, I, I, I figured it the fuck out, you know, and then it was easy from there. And I remember being like, bro, the, I feel like I'm just like every motherfucker I know has tried, like anyone under the age of 25 has heard of like drop shipping or heard of sales or heard of cop, like, you know, whatever the online businesses are. And the only commonality between every single one that has not figured it out is that they quit. There's no other fucking thing there. It's like none of those businesses are hard. None of those businesses take a genius to figure out. Nothing, none of this stuff. It's literally just you have to go through it and you have to spend some money. So I was like, okay. I, I remember I put $1,000 in this bank account with my boy, Evan. We put it in this bank account. And we're like, we're going to go. We're not, we're going to show up. If this money goes, we might quit. We might put some more in. But like, let's just use it. Let's just go. Right. And. It was like, you know, half my bank account going in there mm -hmm. and we just stuck with it. And then eventually like, dude, it just grew itself. You know, it's when you, yeah. When you bet on yourself, that's, and when you can stick out what you're doing long term, that's when you get the results. It's like, even with, with the stampede, it took me like seven months before I got my first sale, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But bro, it's like, how many times did you want to quit? Of course you wanted to quit. So many. Dude. Of course you were like. Dude, we were talking about this the other day. I had this this kid. Have you seen the kid who's blowing up on YouTube, Mikey again? Um, Mikey. Yeah. He's African. 
he's after he literally lives in like Nigeria or something. I'd have to and see. he does like ecom. No. Okay. Um, he was in my Discord and shit, and he just jumped on this call impromptu, and we were talking, and he was telling me about he had the same thing. It was like six months before he got his first sale, and this is some real shit. We realized it was like. I think also when you're a beginner, like a lot of shit is just really fucking cloudy, mm-hmm. you know, like it just seems like, is this even possible? Is this, is this too saturated? Like where, where, how do they actually make money? You know, like you're just asking you all yourself, like, I don't even get it. I don't understand it. You know, to me now, it seems like, of course this works, mm-hmm. you know, of course this is one, two, three. This is exactly what you do. Mm-hmm. But at that time, it just is like everything just seems so unreal. Right. You know, it just doesn't. But if you stick through it, bro, it's glorious. So how many drop shipping stores did you do before the swimwear popped? Six. Six. Bro, the swimwear, <laughs> the swimwear was my first sale and like my first sale ever on a product. And we just went with that. that so you <laughs> went through six before. What were some of the other stores? Oh, bullshit, fucking uh, posture corrector, Dude. yoga pants, <laughs> I almost hopped barbecue, the shit. <laughs> yeah, barbecues, some some shit like that. Yeah, I think I went through um, like six or seven before before the stampede. I think you'd like have to go through that. And that's, you know, so many people get shiny object syndrome and they jump from one to the next, the next. Like every model works if you do. Yes, bro. Pick one and just stick with it, bro. Yeah. Fuck. And so like, you know? there's so many systems, though, with building a business that you have to learn by going through those reps. And so that's like what you're doing with this, with the creator thing, is your. That's what I was going to say right here. Yeah, that, go, for, yeah, it. go okay. for it. Well, I didn't want to interrupt you. What, what were you going to so say? I was basically like, you bypass all of that stuff and you get to do the needle moving thing, right? It, like, that's that's what makes the money. Right. And so, yeah. yeah. So it's like the, the beauty of this creator thing, like, dude, I'm telling you the success rate of drop shipping, let's just say organic drop shipping, whatever to, to being a creator is probably 5% for organic. I'd say actually go on and, and make, you know, just some, let's say 10,000 in sales or more mm-hmm. 5%, five. And I have enough data to like stand by that creator shit. I'd say it's literally probably 50%. percent hmm like it's it's astronomically higher you know of course there's still people who quit on this shit whatever right um but being a and like we'll see as the time goes on you know we're two months into this shit like we'll see as time goes on maybe it'll be even higher once we learn more stuff but bro it's the the focus on one thing is so important right because with drop shipping this is the issue right it takes kind of a psychopath to really stick with it i'm just talking e-commerce whatever because you got to learn marketing so let's just call it like for us, it's going to be TikTok stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just like one of the things. Then you got to learn fulfillment. Then you got to learn customer service, hiring people. Then you got to learn how to choose a good product. Consumer psychology is literally takes fucking forever. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I feel like I just figured that out. Um, you got to learn building a store, like all this kind of shit, right? Like all those things are skills in themselves that you have to figure out how to combine all together, mm-hmm. right? It takes months. That's why no one does it before three, four months. Like this is why it takes so long to figure out, right? And even if you watch a course, I tell you exactly what to do. There's still like shit you got to piece together. With the creator shit, all we focus on is the viral part, right? All we're doing is say, hey, I'm going to give you this fucking product. It's a good product that's gone viral before. You don't have to fulfill on anything. You don't have to, you don't have to check inventory. You don't got to do nothing. Mm-hmm. You you just got to make this account, post this content, and try to go viral, try to blow it up. Or honestly, like just do the deliverables. And you will get paid even if you're a fucking beginner. Right. You know, you will still get some money as a beginner. Yeah. So you're, you're getting that dopamine rush all the way through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, dude, like product, you got product, actually knowing what the knowledge that goes into a product, if it's like a consumable, you got team management skills, you got paid ads. Um, branding yep. itself got like, there's so many different skills that go into this and it takes a long yeah. time. And so it's like, basically what this is, it's short form sales. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. But you know, the differences in sales, a lot of times, like you're, you're doing like 
bitch ass grunt work. Mm -hmm. Like you're doing the same thing as a creator all the way through, mm -hmm. right? It's not like you start it. You don't start as an appointment setter, and then go to like you know a kind of closer. Then to, you know you don't do that with like that's like sales. Sales is great. Sales is great, but it's like not for everyone. Just like being a creator is not for everyone either. Um, the difference though is like creator, you're doing the same shit all the way through. You're just making content, mm -hmm. and you're making it all from your phone. You don't gotta do any like. You know, you don't got to pull out a DSLR camera. There's some editing, but, like, shit's easy. Facts. So, if you were a creator just getting started, what are some of the traits and skills that they need the most to actually, like, perform with a brand to get sales and, you know, get results? Yeah, so, like, something to note too is like with our program like we don't take people in unless they've like they like know how to make a tiktok yeah. type shit like they like you can't be 40 years old 40 40 years old and never <laughs> used a phone like it's just like we can't we can't help you bro you know <laughs> right like i the majority of the people who join are like failed drop shippers or like even even drop shippers that have done well before that are just like they see that they understand that if i get really good at content mm -hmm. I can on it. I can make cash flow on the side of my dropshipping stores, and have stuff consistently coming in every month. And I can get dummy good at content, so that when I go to my own brand, that shit's easy. Mm -hmm. You know, like that shit's like already do that. Um, so like with our beginners, dude. Honestly, like we just have them focus on getting good brands. Like we have really good partner brands with us. Um, you know, and we walk them, make sure they finish through all the course and everything like that. So that's like. You know, teaching them how to learn emotion sparking, like that's the key to going viral, always has been. And then like we have like a bunch of different frameworks of styles of videos, which is definitely like huge, super fucking helpful. You know, right. there's like five, six video styles we run, contrast, you know, storylines, trends, like we just, we, as long as they learn those five, bro, like eventually they'll figure it out. Look, and there's a little sauce you get. I want to break that down. So imagine that right now you're making a viral video right what are some of those mm -hmm. frameworks that you would do like break those down and kind of give your thought process of making a video like from start to post kind of what it, you've done so many right like mm -hmm. kind of what that would look like for you going through your mind because that's really what people want to hear dude so th this is something i'm very grateful i started as a creator because with the swimwear brand like we did all those videos you know mm -hmm. with ourselves so I understand this at a deeper level. The thing is, is once it, it's hard for me to explain like where I'm at now, because I, where I'm at now, it's like, I can just look at a product. I've seen so many goddamn videos and I have so many historical data points of different styles where it's like, and Sydney has this too now where you just look at it and it's just like, you know, literally I'm like, boom, okay, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. Right. But I was explaining this to someone yesterday, just like dumbing it down. Basically, you, you'll really learn commonalities between products, right? When I supplements, I know exactly what to do. You know, it's going to be like the AI education videos. It's going to be like what what happens when you take this? Like it's going to be like, you know, really in sparking emotion around the insecurity of the product, right? So if it's testosterone boosting, you know, it's, sorry, someone's calling me. You get it. Um, um, uh, explaining, you know, like, okay, what are the downsides of not having testosterone? Kind of like, you know, whatever insecurity playing into it. Then I look at a fucking trending product, like, you know, like a, like a chameleon swim, right? Color changing. I'm like, okay, it's all about just like highlighting this product, you know, making people talk about it. Right. So it's like, we're going to be using a lot of trends. We're going to be doing a fuck ton of contrast because it's like a clear build off another product. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, it's really just understand these commonalities. And once you start seeing them, it's easy. It's like, okay, supplement, this is the kind of stuff they run slideshows, right? Like then, okay, now I look over at, at a trending product. All right, I'm going to build, do like, you know, okay, this is how we did it before versus how we do it now. Then I look over at like a women's product. It might have certain commonalities. It's basically just understanding that over time and starting to see them by just doing, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have to just do. And you'll figure it out because a lot of this game too is emotion um so okay yeah, yeah yeah so what what do you do to 
spark emotion in people to make them actually want to watch a video. Cause like I see so many creators, their hooks are all right, but you know, they're not really digging into it and connecting with the audience um, and not able to retain those views. So it's like, how, how do you, how do you do that to the point that you can replicate over and over? Yeah. So that's definitely like a di big difference between like a good and a bad fitter, right? Yeah. Is like, um, understanding like how to really intrigue people so like hooks are really important um like like having a beginning middle and end we talk about a lot like having quick clips and like understanding how to keep people like really like amazed at your content is definitely like you can look at a good and bad creator and see that immediately but emotion sparking is the key right i'll always bring up the example of making someone laugh right if i if i had some funny content for you right and i posted it people are going to comment to, they're going to watch it multiple times, right? Because all we want is engagement. A engagement boosts everything, right? So it's like, you post a really funny video, they watch it twice because they're laughing so hard. Then they comment laughing emojis because it was so funny. They like the post. Then they save it so they can watch it later and laugh again. And then they send it to a friend. Like, dude, they literally just did every single engagement possible right there, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's, okay, how can you do that? It's not just laughing. It's not just laughing. It's like, okay, now we talk about the insecurity thing. It's like, okay, I, I definitely like, you know, I'm all up into the gym culture, all that stuff like you are. So I'm like, okay, someone does a video about education, about like a, a shoulder thing. I had a bad shoulder, right? It's like, okay, I'm watching this shoulder exercise. I'm really interested. I watched it twice. I saved it. I sent it to my friend who has a bad shoulder. That was education. That was like a thing playing into like, you know, my like pain point I had, right? Then it's a product. Then it's like, I know I have, let's say, I know I have trouble focusing, right? So then you get like a nootropic supplement and you, you dive into people who can't focus. Everybody feels like they have ADHD in America, right? So it's like, but no one wants to take, not everyone wants to take Adderall. So you're like, here's nature's Adderall. Here's how to fix your ADHD with nature's Adderall. Right. That's a hook, right? Yep. And you dive into that and you get people really interested in that. You tap into like making them feel like, oh my God, this is going to help my life so much. You know, like making that feel the value from those videos that's what's going to get them to save and want to buy and do all that. Everything comes down to a feeling. 100%. And it's a lot easier to do that too, I've noticed, when you've gone through the experience. Right? Right. So many people want to talk on things they don't actually know about. But it's like, you know, you don't get results until you've gone through something. And one of my, one of my favorite quotes is, you know, our purpose is in our pain. Mm, yeah. That's hard. Yeah. And so it's like, for you, what are, what are the biggest pains that you've gone through that have like led you down this path? Well, I'll touch on that with my creators too. Like this is also that, that exact thing is why we don't have our creators just do any willy nilly product. They pick, right? Cause I want you to resonate with my product. I want you, and that, this is also like when I only had 10 creators, that was a problem cause I was placing people on shit they didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. Right. So now that we have an abundance of creators, people are picking shit that they want to do. Right. Like I, a girl is not going to want to do a girl that, that sits inside all day is not going to want to do a gym product and have to film in the gym. No. Right. But she might want to do like a, a health cleanse tea where she just films it in her house, whatever. And that like, she enjoys it and her content's going to be way better. Yeah. Right. hundred percent system. And then what well, your question was, was, well, I'm, I'm kind of confused. What, what was your question? For you, I just want to know, like, what, what are the major, like, turning moments in your life, like, the, the struggles that you've been through that have kind of gotten you to this point? Because, like, you know, we can talk about creators and stuff all day, but at the end of the day, uh -huh. you're an entrepreneur, and you're going on a journey, right? And it's self-development, it's self-mastery, mm -hmm. um, and it's like, you're going to expand to way more than this, right? So it's like... Yeah, you know, kind of like what's your why the struggles that you've really gone through the most and what's inspiring you for the future to because you have to be inspired by something to keep building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100% dude, it, it all goes back to childhood like it always does. Um, you know, very blessed to have the family I do like I have an amazing family all that but you know, like we grew up in a in a nice area in Palo Alto, California. And the only reason we lived here was because my parents bought the house like 35 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, and 
like you know the the market absolutely this is silicon valley like the market absolutely skyrocketed you know my parents bought the house for like a couple hundred thousand you know and now it's you know every you can't get a house in palo for under a few million and you know lived in this shack bro like this house is like fucking two bedrooms and like living around all these people that had a lot of money you know, it, I, I do enjoy this part, though, because it's not like L.A. where people are, like, flexy. Like, I never had friends that had nice cars, but they had hella money. You know, like, we never went on vacations. Like, my friends were going on vacations. Like, I like it was always an issue with some shit. And then, dude, my parents got divorced over money. Like, my dad just, like, you know, love him, but, like, he just really couldn't bring the bread home. And, like, he, he couldn't figure out how to keep a job. You know, he really wanted to make his own business work, but had too much ego involved, just being straight up. Um, and my mom had to like bring the bread home, bro. My mom was, was a teacher. Thankfully teachers around here get paid very well, but you know, she had to, she really, you know, raised me and my brother from when I was like 13 on paid for everything. Like, you know, was doing all that. And I was like, dude, you know, I, I, and this is also something else my parents did that is like amazing. Like we weren't broke, definitely not even close. Um, always had food on the table, but we just weren't rich. And my parents were like, yeah, you want, you want nice shit. You want clothes. You want to go get it. You know, like you got to pay for that shit. Like I never had more than a hundred dollars a month allowance, you know, like, and didn't have anything after I turned 16 or 17 or whatever. And I, I had to go get it. So I knew how to work for it. I knew like I had the ability to get cash when I wanted to. I, I had a lot of control over myself, always had jobs. And I just was like, dude, I want to be like those kids i know the value of taking money off the table how that improves your love life my parents divorced 100 percent over money you know or it's 80 percent over money like if they had money they could have figured out how to love each other more they could have been better parents you know they were great parents still but like i just like this is so clear that i need to get this done you know i need to provide and i need to get that done and i also enjoy it bro like fuck i like i like being sovereign and having freedom in my life too and like building something that you're you're going through it you don't know if you're going to figure it out and it's you're struggling and then one day you crack it and you can just do it all over again so that's like that's that's my whole life and whole like motivation for everything is right there dude i love that that's awesome and so before i kind of ask you where where you want to go let's intro creators corner a little bit so uh -huh. tell the people about what you've been building up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, dude, that's a fucking hell of a hell of a change right there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, honestly, like Creators Corner at the moment, like almost feels like my life's work, right? Where it's like, I really am doing something I fucking love now. Yeah. Um, and making amazing money doing it. Basically, Creators Corner it is the way we are helping people become creators for brands and really, you know, change their life making content online. Like, dude, this is the shit I wish I could have done when I first started. I took the hard route mm -hmm. doing the drop shipping shit. Like, when I remember making my first $5,000, like, you know, like, I don't know, it wasn't even like in a month or anything, just having 5,000 in my bank and being like, holy fuck. It's life changing, like, like, bro. Yes, bro. Like, holy fuck. Like, this is, you can make money doing something like this, right? And now that's like so normal for our creators. like. And they're just they're building skills that really make them high value people in society right like if you know how to blow shit up like my whole career has been built off that bro i've been in so many rooms i should not be in just because i know TikTok. but you me, should right? be that's why you're there uh, yeah okay thank you brother I'm thank glad. you you know i'm trying to i'm trying to be humble over nah, here you good. Own, own that shit let's go <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's like yeah going all in on one skill is the fucking way bro and i think this is the one of the biggest skills undoubtedly that people like want these days you know as creators i get hit up all fucking day for creators right and these these people really can take the time to learn a skill that sets them free and can replace their nine to five truly like dude i've put on like five of my hometown friends onto being a creator i've not put one on the drop shipping because it's just like it's too hard bro yeah and it's like finally sets them free teaches them skills that they can use for life and you know puts them on that path of becoming sovereign and doing their own thing and doing what they actually want to do love that so gone from turning your pain into your purpose helping people do the same 
Mm-hmm. Now, where are you going? What's the goal like a year, five years from now? What do you see in your mind? Dude, I just want to fucking keep making, keep making brands, helping creators grow. Like, dude, we're six weeks, seven weeks into to Creators Corner mm-hmm. where I feel like we have, I think, like 60 creators, 70 creators now. That's insane. And it's like, I mean, that's, yeah, you're killing it. It's awesome. It's awesome. Um, and, you know, it's not, it's not cheap to join. No. I mean, there's a lot of value that gets provided. It's a full-on coaching program. Yeah. You know, it's a four-month program. It shouldn't be. But, uh, I mean, it's like, you know, you back up what you're talking about. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, I want to keep getting more creators, bro. I want to, like, keep growing on socials. And so, you know, I can network with more amazing people and, you know, build these brands, actually get some real exits that are not for pennies, you know, fucking learn more, keep, keep scaling TikTok shit and just let it go, you know, let it rip. Yeah. You're one of those dudes who's very good at being in the present moment, I've noticed, so. Yeah, I, I try to, I try my best to do that, you know. I have goals and shit yeah. and like, dude. This this is some shit I know you wanted to touch on it earlier. Like I I don't know how much this plays into the success of like my creators and all that stuff. Cause like, bro, have you worked with creators as good as mine? I can't say that I have unless I've trained them directly, no. Right, like like just like subsidiary brand creators, just like immediately going. No, like, yours definitely have the sauce. Yeah, they come in and just pop shit off. Yeah. Me, right? Like not all of them, but like if you hire five of them, like one of them is gonna go. Hundred um, percent. And all of them, I don't know if you know this, bro, but all of them, like I have like journaling, like motherfuckers, and meditating, and mm. and like really do visualizing shit. Let's go. You know? <laughs> like hard, and I like I. It's a requirement yeah. type thing. Like you can't and. It's a dice game, though, because I will say it's easy to fall into not living in the present when you do that. Yeah. When you're constantly, like, you know, like, goal-driven. Like, I try to teach them to be process-driven, right, and action-based goals. But at the same time, like, you have to have some vision of where you want to be. Right. Um, But, dude, that shit changes everything. You know, when you – I try – I'm really focusing these days on trying to, like, become this person of who I want to be. And it's not even a want, like, who I know I am. Yeah right and becoming that person first and letting that like i want to i want to i try to separate reality Oops. from my future self like i want to think of my future self already now like i want to i want to like get lost in the difference like i don't want to ever think there's a difference between me and the future i am that it's just like time's catching up right yeah it's more so like we we're everything we need to be it's just like we're holding ourselves back it's more so like releasing the brakes and getting rid of those mm-hmm. things and allowing them. getting out of your own fucking way. Exactly. Exactly. What do you do? What do you do? Do you do you journal? Do you meditate? What's your thing? So my daily routine is as soon as I get out of bed, I do a hundred burpees. It sucks. That's tough. It sucks, tough. but you raise your vibration immediately, and it's like you give yourself that first hard win, and so you prime your brain, your dopamine system to keep doing that. And so the rest of the day is like, wow, yeah, it's super easy because the dopamine system at the end of the day is just what directs our actions, right? And so if, mm-hmm. if you like get out of bed before you even look at your phone, you get your sunlight, mm-hmm. you do your, your burpees. And then what I'll do is I'll take a cold shower or a cold plunge and then I'll meditate for like 20 minutes, right? And so, you know, you'll get entrepreneurs be like, no, just get out of bed and work. It's like, you can do that. But at the end of the day, it's like, what's, what's the commonality between every business you run is you, right? So it's like, Mm -hmm. you need to treat yourself the exact same way you would treat that business in its ideal form. And so it's like, get Mm -hmm. up, do the hard thing, prime your reward system to continue to win. Um, you know, Mm -hmm. just win that day. So it's like, I get up, burpees, all that stuff. There's some days where I get caught, you know, going to my phone and get lost in that for the first 30 minutes of my day. And dude, it's crazy how much it fucks up the rest of your day because you're, you're set to like the short shitty dopamine. It's hard. And that's like one, one of the simple things you can do is with habits, people want to like get rid of habits, but everything is energy, right? And so it's like, instead of trying to just get rid of something and go cold turkey, Instead, just try and replace it. So transmute it. 
And so it's like, instead of trying to get rid of a habit, I'll put a new one in. So it's like, say- Give me an example of that. So example is, say you wanna drink more water, right? Instead of trying to completely change your routine, what you could do is just fill a glass of water and put it in the middle of another habit. So say you're gonna brush your teeth, your water's right there and you drink it before you brush your teeth. Say, um, you- So like, let's say I wanna get up in the morning and, and do burpees or run outside. Right. You no, know, cause like, that's something I wanna get, I would love to get in my bag, you know? Yeah, so I would put your phone before you go to bed in just another room. Right. And so okay. I, was, I do. I do put it across the room, cool. but like, well, I could set it even further. Maybe. Yeah, I would just put it in another room. And so it's like you set your environment up. So you get up. You have to get up. And when you're up, what you could do is, and obviously there's some willpower involved, but maybe do like five burpees before you go to your mm-hmm. phone, and then you do that every day for a week, and then you just start slowly building it up. And so it's like, you don't have to like nuclear bomb this thing immediately, but over time you just slowly build up new ones. You replace habits. So like, for example, I did a podcast where I was talking about like guys whacking it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's, that's a massive issue today because dudes are just chasing these dopamine rushes. Right. And so Mm -hmm. what you can do is you could transmute that energy, for example, into pushups, right. Every time you get an urge. Right. And so all of a sudden you're going to link this feeling in this reward system to the pushups and you get that feeling of turn on into push-ups. Pavlov's dogs, baby. Exactly. Pavlov's dogs. It's all a replacement yep. game, bro. At the end of the day. Yeah. And so it's like, think, yeah, how dude. can I take this one habit and turn it into another habit without actually getting rid of it? Mm-hmm. That's so hard, bro. That's fire. Yeah. I love that. That'll, that'll- yeah. Cause dude, you have, you have the choice. Like this is uh, I forgot who said this, but this shit really changed my life. And, it's good to get reminded of this um, is you have the choice between your action and your reaction, right? Mm-hmm. Or, or what is it? The, the, the stimulus and the reaction, right? Like you have the choice. Everyone thinks, Hey, if someone does this, like I have to feel this emotion. I don't have a, like I, how many times have you heard someone say like, I don't have a choice. I just felt that way. Yes. No, you do, Crazy. bro. Yeah. You do. Right. It's like, and that's even like, it's, it's hard to like, you know, no one's perfect at this. Like shit makes us mad sometimes, whatever. Um, but it doesn't have to be that way. And it doesn't have to be that you, when you feel some urge, you go do something you shouldn't do. Right. Right. You have the choice every time it just takes training. Right. And a lot of it too, bro, is like those emotions that we don't want the anger, the sadness, all that stuff. It's identifying something inside of ourselves. And so many of us will like go run to something to get rid of the feeling. Right. And all we're trying to do is just numb the feeling away instead of if we just ask ourselves what is this telling me right why am i pissed off it means there's something inside of you that you feel lack of control lack of freedom it goes against your beliefs right and so like these are all amazing things that help us find deeper aspects and truths within ourselves. and so it's like yeah you know, the fact that you're doing this with your community is massive and that's why they get results yeah yeah dude and uh, yeah, it's so true. Like, and I, I think the most proud thing I am too is like, you know, when they, they get results in every area of life, like I don't find the fact that, you know, I have money now and all this stuff to be like my greatest success. Like, bro, I've like, I'm a better son, mm-hmm. you know, like, bro, like I, my mom and I didn't have the greatest relationship, bro. Like when I was in high school, I just was like, I had that teenage angst shit, you know, like <laughs> where you, you draw every, every man's been through this shit though, where you're just like, dude, why am I like not super i don't know if you've been through this but you're like it's like why am i like kind of a dick to my mom you know like i she's in my room and i just don't want to talk to her you know or something like that it was like an angst feeling yeah yeah you know and i was just like dude the fuck and i remember snapping out of it one day it's like dude you you you, i wish like my some of my hometown friends know but like bro like you know it's completely different now like my mom and i like you know that's my ride or die and she always was but it's just like now it's like actually like a loving relationship and my friends, like I'm a more loyal friend, you know, I'm like, I'm more caring to people I know in the world. Like I, I, it's not, it's, it's not a flex to be making a ton of money and have people not like you and to not be making an impact. Yeah. Right. Like my, like I like seeing my creators, like make a ton of money and then go on the gym grind mm-hmm. and then fucking talk about how they're, they're helping their siblings and, you know, making better relations with their moms and shit. Like, dude, that's, that's the shit. 
that's like that's how I know they're doing the right. At the end of the day, bro, it's just developing people, you know. And so, yeah, yeah, I mean, you're you're doing a right. great. Like you are a really good coach, right? So I mean, like really good. And so it, it's also natural to you too. I've seen, um, and there's so many people that struggle with that. And it's like you know, the more you're willing to actually dissect yourself and go to those deeper levels of yourself, the more you can do that with others. Right. Right. The goal is results, you know, so it's like that's the shit that's going to work. Bro, my most successful students, without a doubt, bro, are the ones that are taking that time, right? Of like, because it's also when you start writing shit, like, you you know, with like uh, with journaling and all that, like the key, what I've realized in the times where I wasn't, I wasn't consistent with it, which happens sometimes, it was because I it felt like a mm -hmm. chore, right? And I learned this from Peter Kell. Like, you have to make it something you genuinely enjoy, like you look forward to, right? And so there's different, everyone's going to be different. Like, for me, I like to write, you know, I'm so grateful that I am this future thing, but I say it like the present, right? I'm so grateful I'm a multimillionaire. I'm so grateful I have an eight-figure brand. Like, I'll write these things. And that works for me. But for, for you know, some kid like Michael in my group, like, he likes to be like, um, I'm working towards this. I know that this will come. I enjoy this process. Like he likes to talk in a different style. Then I have people who don't like writing at mm -hmm. all. You know, they're like, I just want to speak it or I just want to think about it, you know, and that works for yeah. them. We all have our own out. I mean, that's why you kill it on Twitter, you know? And so what do you mean? Like Twitter's writing, you know? And so it's like your, yeah, your okay, authenticity yeah. comes out in that style. That's why I do well on TikTok, right? And so it's like so much right. of those it's not about choosing like the vehicle that you care the most about as much as like which one's natural to you. Yeah, exactly. Especially for that shit. And then what happens though, the, the, the underlying thing is exactly the same, right? Is that eventually you do it long enough. These things that you're saying are like, you genuinely can't distinguish the reality. You're like, of course this is going to mm -hmm. happen. You know, like this is, it's, it's right, right around the mm -hmm. corner. Like time's catching up. Like these kids, I'll tell them, yo, write down that you're going to blow up this brand and, and you're going to make all these commissions and you're going to have that money that you finally dreamed of coming in every single month. And it's going to come in the month after that. And you're going to do more views than you ever thought. There's going to be a point where you can't even stop blowing up these videos. Absolutely. Right. And they're like, you can see their skin kind of going up and they're like, sit up a little higher and shit. And they're like, you know, and then they're like, you know, it's this feeling of just like you come in with a clear mind and that's when that shit happens of like, I just look at a product and somehow it gets figured mm -hmm. out, right? I know exactly what exactly. to do. Exactly. You know, it. It, it just, it falls into your lap, right? If you tell yourself, hey, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna figure out how to make money online. I'll come in front of you if I'm supposed to come in front of you. You know, Luke Alexander will come in front of you if he's supposed to come, in front of you. whoever, you know, you're gonna meet the right person, have the right opportunity and do right. it. Because you, you believe in like law of attraction, all that stuff. If you don't, yeah. I, I just like I think you're there's behind. Some, you know, there's you, some no. I think there's some ego shit behind for that sure. for real. Like oh, okay, yeah, go on that real quick. Yeah, I think there's some serious ego shit behind that where people are like, and I don't care if you don't believe it in it or not. You know, like it's your own life, yeah. bro. That's like that's identity politics and shit. When people are all care about right. that, um, but I think when people are like that, you see the classic thing. They're like, oh yeah. You think you can just think shit and it'll become true? It's like, those dudes are such goofies, you know? Like, dude, that's not the point here, bro. Of course you gotta do shit. You know, of course. But, if you have a clearer vision, it's no doubt, bro, that if you if you think these things and you visualize... Bro, it's like the study of the people who shoot a basketball, and they have people just shoot a basketball, right? They have the same people off 100 shots think about every shot going in and hear the swish they shot like 30% mm -hmm. better, right? Of course you should visualize shit, bro. Like, yes, Brad, that shit, like, you know, it's, you're gonna, your brain, your subconscious has all these abilities that your conscious mind doesn't yeah. have, right? This is science. Yeah, it's 90, 99% right? of our thinking, I mean. Right, so if you keep that, all that visualization shit is just telling, hey, subconscious, be ready to solve this problem when it comes, right. you know? I don't think there's things of like, okay, if I, you know, think about this person or I think about this goal chick I want or something. She's going to magically fly from another part of the world here and just fall into my lap. You know, it's not like that. 
right? But it's you will you will be led towards the area you want to go in life. That's just for facts. sure. And like faith at the end of the day is really just believing in a certain outcome, right? And so it's like the outcome we keep planning in our mind, you can have faith in a negative one too. So Yeah, oh for sure, for sure, bro. I mean dude, self sabotage is super real. I've struggled with it. I always will, you know, it's just part of the game. Um you know, like you're never gonna be perfect. Sure. Uh killing ego is important though. Like I really you know, I'll, I'll I'll toot my own horn here. I really just don't have an ego like that. Well, I, I, I'm not I that type of I noticed that, hundred percent. Yeah, like you're you're good with that shit too, man. And you know, I think a lot of that too is being around people who are really egotistical. Mm -hmm. Like you know, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> and it's like, dude, you know, there's no benefits to that. Every time you're doing that, it's because you've got something going on inside, yeah, right? Thanks. The shit that I I find myself having to talk about and like you know have people praise me for is the shit that I'm really not that confident yeah. in. Facts. That's you so know? true. And it's and these times one of the one another mind shift I had that like I know you're on this type of time. Oh my God, this was the like one of the best things ever. And I enjoy people who are on this type of time so much is I started looking for what's right and not being right. Mm. So much of my life, bro, I was trying to be right. I try to win arguments I try to, you know, can I, when I look something up, I'm looking to confirm my own bias, right? My whole life, bro, everybody's trained to do this. It's like, it's not, people don't like being wrong. We're not taught that wrong, being wrong isn't cool, right? Being right is cool and it feels like you're mm -hmm. winning. It's some bullshit. But when you start looking at shit like, oh, I want, I want to find what's right. I, I'm, I'm actually like looking to disprove myself a lot of times. Life on Bro, that is that is the sauce of this podcast right there. <laughs> Dude, honestly, yes, I agree, bro. I agree. Yeah. You got like you know how refreshing it is to have a conversation with someone and they say something like like I say something, right? I'm like, yo, fucking being a creator is the best way to make money. And you're like, is it though? Like, or is this a better or I say drop shipping's the best way to make money and then it's like, oh, is is but is a creator better? And instead of me just being like, No, 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 no. It's this because of this and that's bullshit and just trying to take down your argument and never admitting anything. If we take a second and be like, all right, let's see. Maybe maybe it is better, bro. Absolutely. You know? Right. And you look at it like, bro, you're happier, your relationships are better. It's it's honestly it's from how to win friends and influence people. So obviously it's gonna improve. Hundred percent. You know. And so for any of you that have any interest in, you know, creating content going down this route, the, the creator corner, any of that stuff, if that interests you, what's the best way that they could apply, get in touch with you? Where can they follow you? Yeah. So best place to follow me is Twitter, to be honest with you. You can check me out on IG. I just, I try to keep that not business yeah. stuff, but, um, is this, is this going to be posted on YouTube? Or yeah, it'll be going? YouTube, um, normal podcast. So I'll link it too. Okay. Yeah. We'll get a link here. You can book a call with like a, with Luca and see if you're a good fit for Creators Corner. Most of the people that joined Creators Corner started in our Discord mm -hmm. too. You know, you can check that out, see what we're about. It's 50 bucks. You know, you can check it out. Um, well, we can give you a link for that as well. And you come in, check it out, see what it, the vibe is. A lot of that shit's gonna be dropshipping shit. You're gonna be like, God damn, that's so much work. I should just go be a creator. And then you can go check Guys, it out. Guys, I'll tell you right now as a brand about. owner, like, <laughs> In 2023, you are so much better off going down the creator route and learning the skill that actually drives a business forward anyway. You know, it's last thing I'll say with the creator shit too, that big factor, because we talked about skills a mm -hmm. lot, right? Another thing, bro, is like people thinking they're going to make stupid money off a of brand. is just really funny to me. Like you're, you're not making crazy cash flow as a brand, owner, right. right? Like you're not, you're not making, if, you, if your brand nets 50,000 a month, you, you got to keep most of that in the bank, right? You know, and go like get inventory and all this shit, right? Dude, creators stack so much bread. You got no overhead costs. When you want to go make that brand later, not only do you have the skills, but you got the fucking yeah, money, dude. bro. You got, you've got the fucking money. You stack up fucking like 10, 20,000, even if as low as that, like some of my creators have, you know, over 50,000 liquids just sitting there, right? How much easier is it to get into business when you got fifty thousand dollars for fucking five hundred? Bro, and it's just like so high leverage. I mean, it takes when you get good at making videos, it can it takes me maybe five minutes a day, and you know that that pumps right. like hundreds of thousands of dollars. So imagine like doing that 
for multiple brands and not having to worry about yes, any bro. of the other underlying costs. You just get paid to do that. Yeah. So any if that if any of that fucking two of you are out there, if any of that sounds good, just check it out, bro. Just talk talk to us. Um, you know, see if the vibe's for you. But if you're ready to change your life, I I, I put a lot of people onto this. I feel really confident talking yeah. about it because I know how You're the only is. person I'd I'd honestly refer people to about it. So that's yeah, that says a lot. But so to finish this one off, what is one piece of advice that you got for the young bull in your situation a few years ago who's kind of trying to figure it out with the money, figure out their path, and you know figure out a future that, that resonates with them and where they want to go? Dude, stack up some bread. Get, get a little bit. Get a, a couple thousand so you're not starving. Don't put yourself in dumb situations, unnecessary debt, all that, right? Then start reading some books and just get started on some business, whatever resonates with you, and don't ever fucking give up, bro. Like, literally think of giving up like dying. That's – that. think of giving up like you, you died. <laughs> And you will be okay, bro. Like, honestly, you'll I, love, be okay. I got some major you Rocky Mickey vibes out of that one. I love that. <laughs> hey, you you ain't got to – dude, another thing. You ain't got to grind 10 hours a day, too. You ain't got to do any of that shit. Don't, don't listen to the people just telling you to work hard. Like, working hard mm -hmm. is good. But, bro, work, working 30 minutes a day is so much better for, for the rest of your life, you know, or just, or just trying to chip away at a side hustle for 30 minutes a day is so much better – than the kid who works 10 hours, grinds their face off one day a week, and then quits after yep. three months. You know, don't don't fall for that. Don't think you have to grind, bro. I started doing 30 minutes a day. Obviously, now I work more because I want right. to. But, like, I started. Work yourself in. Just show up every day and don't give up, bro. If you give up, you die. Let's go. You Let's die. Go. Life is, life is go. a marathon, not go. a sprint. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, brother. this yes. was the Stampede Network Podcast. That is the man, Jimmy Farley. If any of that stuff interests you, the links will be attached. Check out the Creator Corner. Check out his socials. And on that note, I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you, Jimmy.